Hey again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. Well, you know I do a lot of propagation videos, particularly on roses, but also on shrubs and other perennials. And one question I've been asked an awful lot is whether it makes sense to use honey as a rooting hormone. Sometimes this is asked in the context of, well, what if I can't find your recommended rooting hormone in my local area? Could I use honey instead? Other people recommend it as a more natural alternative to rooting hormone. I want to put all that to the test today by doing an experiment where I'm going to pose cutting stuck with honey versus cutting stuck with dip and grow, which is a liquid mixed rooting hormone, as well as with my standard rooting powder that I use for semi-hardwood cuttings. And I'll do a fourth group as well, and that group will be stuck with nothing at all. Just no hormone, no honey, no nothing. So the question becomes, um, how quickly will they put on roots? I actually think that the variety I've chosen, which what I've chosen is a rose called Fellowship. It's actually pretty eager to root on its own already. I've done, I've had a lot of success propagating in the past. Even this late in the season, there's no question that I should be able to get some roots on before winter. So the question isn't so much whether they will succeed. There may be rates of difference there as well but rather how quickly they will succeed. And I expect that ones that have rooting hormone should, at least in theory, put down roots a little bit faster than either the group that has the honey or the group that is stuck with nothing at all. That's in theory. The way that honey is supposed to work is it actually works as a protectant. It isn't really intended to speed up uh, the rooting. I don't think it has any hormones in it or anything that is supposed to have that mode of action. It's really just there to coat the bottom of the cuttings uh, and keep the bacteria and fungus from infecting it or killing it before it has a chance to put down roots. So I'm going to try all this out. I'm going to start collecting some fellowship cuttings from the field here and we'll catch up with you after that. So this is the experimental setup here. What I have here is the a tray that I'll be sticking these cuttings into and over here are the cuttings that I just took off of the donor rose fellowship and if you want details about how to do these kinds of cuttings with three or four different nodes on them in the semi hardwood stage just refer back to my video on the complete method for doing roses by cuttings I'll link that above because I go through it in detail and I don't want to repeat it all here so the easiest ones to stick will be the ones that I'm just doing with no rooting hormone at all. And you can see those just go straight in. Normally I stick two in a pot. I usually do a, a larger pot than this, a nine centimeter pot or a four inch pot. And I go two into a pot. In this case, I'm just going to use uh, a single one in a pot for the sake of ease of, uh, of checking on it. So that's the easiest to stick the ones that have no, uh, no rooting hormone. Directly after that, what I like, and this is the one I use most frequently in all of my other cuttings, is I use the ones with rooting hormone uh, powder. And the powder I find really easy to apply, just a quick stick, tap, stick, and that's it. The third easiest to apply will probably be the dip and grow. Uh, that's a little debatable. The dip and grow is a liquid mixed uh, uh, rooting hormone uh, with both uh, IBA and NAA as rooting hormones inside of it. And its ease of use is really, really easy. Like sticking that is really fast, really easy. It's not even a tap, it's just dip and grow, as the name would say. Uh, the downside to it is that you have to mix it before every application. So you fill it to a concentration line at the bottom, you dilute that with water, and there's all sorts of warnings on the label about not coming in contact with this stuff. So you have to be a little bit cautious while you do it as well. So debatable whether it's easy compared to the honey, which is actually really easy to use as well, but a little bit messy. So every time I dip in here, you got this string of honey coming off of it. And I'm an impatient guy, so I'm going to go ahead and stick from it. But as I do that, I know that I will be leaving 
little strings of honey all over the place. And to avoid contaminating all the other roses, what I'll do is I'll take the cup with me. But that's it. So I'll finish up this tray here. Don't need you for all the sticking, but I'll finish up this tray here. And uh, the first row will be the row that is stuck with no rooting hormone at all or no treatment. The second one will be the one that I do with rooting powder. The third one is with dip and grow. That's the liquid mix. And the fourth one will be with honey. And I will catch up with us in about three weeks or so when I start looking for callusing and early rooting across the bottoms of these cuttings. While we're waiting for those cuttings to root, let me quickly go through a few of the other alternative rooting treatments sometimes suggested. In researching this, I found a lot of guessing and anecdotes, but I wasn't able to find a lot of good research or evidence that these things work. So your mileage can and will vary. In addition to honey, some of the commonly suggested folk treatments are, and I'll number these just for convenience. Number one, cinnamon powder, which is supposed to work a lot like honey as an antifungal agent. I also hear it recommended for seedlings uh, to stop damping off, but it sounds kind of messy to me and I've had good success without it. Number two is willow water. And this is usually prepared by crushing or chopping willow branches into boiling water. And there's good reason to think that this could work as a rooting stimulant. It contains IBA, which is an active ingredient in the commercially prepared rooting powders. And my only concern would be how would you know or control the concentration of the hormone? And I suppose what you'd have to do is use a consistent and strong recipe and then experiment a bit to find out how much you would dilute the willow water for the right concentration for your plants. Uh, number three on the list here is aspirin, which is also based originally on extracts of the willow, and some people claim good success using aspirin tablets dissolved in water to encourage roots. Number four here, I've heard a lot about aloe vera, and hey, sure, uh, it seems like this stuff is good for everything from skin care to shiny hair to treating constipation, so why wouldn't you use it as a rooting hormone too? I did see some studies on it used in tissue culture, but nothing so far specific to plant cuttings that I've seen. Uh, finally here in number five, apple cider vinegar, which I'm not so sure where this one comes in, uh, except it's another thing that people seem to recommend for just about everything. Uh, if you are planning on trying it, make sure to dilute it to a weak solution as full strength vinegar is quite damaging to plant tissues. And my take on all of these is to approach them with an open mind, but also healthy skepticism. And please also remember that the criteria for success should not simply be that your cuttings survived or were successful, because that can happen even without any treatment if you give them the right growing conditions. A good measure of success should be that your, treat, that your treatment speeds rooting past its natural rate and preferably at least as much as a commercially available hormone powder or treatment. Time to check on the cuttings now, see how they did initiating rooting. Now my greenhouse is going into the winter season here. I've left it open for air circulation, but I've gotten some cold winds come through here recently and frosted off the tops of my plants. So no surprise here that the roses went ahead and dropped all their foliage. Not a big deal. I'm looking for the rooting anyway, see how they did. So basically you can still see that they're lined up the way they were uh, with the honey here. This one here is the dip and grow. This one here was done by rooting powder and this one here was done with nothing at all. Let's have a closer look and see how they took to rooting and callusing. Okay, here they are all lined up and I'm hoping I can get some good close-ups here. So first thing I'm going to do is pull out the ones that were stuck in honey and I'm gonna see if I can get a good shot of the base of these and get the camera to focus on that. There you go. And you can hopefully see that although there's no rot that's come into it, there also is no real signs of callusing or rooting. And I'll, I'll maybe see if I can get some still photos of that as well because it's going in and out of focus here. All right, let's look at the ones that were rooted with the dip and grow and slightly different story on these is that I can see strong callusing on all three of these you can see that sort of white scar tissue across the bottoms and the bottom ring of those cuttings so that's what I was hoping to see in the course of about three weeks is they should at least have some good callus on them. 
Now moving on to the one with rooting powder. I see even more striking root development, uh, at least on the ones on the two sides. The one in the middle just has a little bit of callusing right here, but this one here has callus and root. Same with this one over here. Good strong callus here and root there. And finally, let's look at the one that is the control. By control, I don't mean that in a scientific way because this really isn't large enough a sample to be scientific, but just to mean the one that I didn't dip into any rooting hormone. And I don't think I could call that meaningfully different than the honey. This one is showing some decent callusing. Let's see if I can get that to come up there. Yeah, that one's showing some decent callusing. These ones here haven't done much yet. So there you have it. In this very limited sample size, what I'm seeing is the best rooting from the rooting powder. Dip and grow had some good strong callusing. And honey and the one treated with nothing basically haven't really begun yet, which at this time of year can be significant to the results because we have very limited amounts of time to get some roots onto these. And so I would choose the ones with the active rooting hormones in them ahead of honey or sticking without just because it gives me a fighting chance of getting these rooted before the winter. Well, thank you so much for watching today. I hope this answered some of your questions about the alternatives that are often suggested against rooting hormones, things like honey and aspirin and aloe vera. And if you have any other questions or any suggestions, please drop those in the comments below the video.